M0 FXB Hamtech, welcome back to the channel. Someone asked me to show these side by side because there's a big price difference. This is the Malahit DSP2. It does VHF and UHF plus HF 6 meters and the broadcast frequencies. Has a nice big screen as you can see. So if we listen to the budget device here, this is called the Software Defined Radio 1.0, although it's a clone of the one that's called that was called 101. So it's a budget clone, it's £75 delivered. If you can hear now we're on 40 meters. And if I tune forward, I've got a signal here showing. Now remember, the price difference is literally £200. These are about £270 delivered, sometimes more. This is 75 delivered. It does do HF. Haven't tested six meters. It does do air band. This does air band. So let's just look, you've got 7.172 there on LSP. Let's do exactly the same with the other device. So we'll tap the screen, we'll go 7.172 megahertz. And you would do the same here, you tap the screen, type it, or just select it by turning the frequency knob. Then we'll put the antenna on there. So I'll do it all live, because there's no antenna on the Malahit at the moment. See, it goes completely flat there. Let's get the right antenna selected here. Now I rate both of these items massively, but I do take into account what they cost because people will go, why isn't the £70 device as good as a £260 device? Well, it's just ridiculous. So let's get the volume up and then we'll get it onto LSB. LSB. Now this one does decode. This one does decode FT8 and I'm pretty sure CW as well. So let's get the same frequency. Uh, 7.172 megahertz. Push down the new volume. Right, let's swap it straight back. I'll let it zoom in a bit. Now they work in a different way. This one, to select items, you push this round knob here. So if I push it, it goes to knob. I can turn it up. If I push again, it eventually get red there, and I can look. Back to 7150 there. If I push and turn the knob, it'll finer increments look. If I push it and move it back to speaker, and then I push again, it'll, the red, look at the red, will go along, but it'll only go halfway. If you want to do the other half, you have to push and turn. And that goes to the bottom selection. See it red? You push and turn. It's a bit fiddly, but it's doable. So now I'm going to put the antenna back on the DSP2. So let's tune. And you can customize all these colors. You can with both devices. You can't customize everything, and there's only limited choices. Both the speakers sound quite good. Uses to switch it, but I think that's a ridiculous And you know, big menus here, that like visual. So, anyway, it's got the BCD back of the linear, has uh, uh, loads of menus to play with. That provide the 
BC, a, a BCD code to tell you which band you're on. So, um, access, and it will know which band that in, input's on. So if I, if I decide... To yes, it does Air on, Band. Yes, it does UHF band. and VHF um, Narrow it, FM. Switch or track. And the whole point is, so let's switch. So we got seven one two zero. Yeah. Take it off. They both got these SMA antennas, but you can buy these really cool little adapters now for that this adapt the SMA to BNC. Now let's put that on there. Let's move it to. If we push the knob. Till it highlights a red on the thing, then push and turn backwards to get it on one megahertz. And then we'll go to 7120, because that was a good clear audio. Wait. Let's listen to a couple of them speak. Fine tune it like that. So this is a much bigger, heavier device. I would say twice as heavy. This is a very portable device. They, it does broadcast radios. If I press and move it to channel, there's a hundred channels you can save. And what I like, and it definitely does do airband. Oh, you've got some airband there already. Let's get a bit louder, but there's some airband there already. And we need to, we're on AM. 9 megahertz spacing is what it's showing. Saying that, you can adjust it here, so. Sorry, 9, 9 kilohertz. Um, let's get it right. Bandwidth, I think. Right, anyway. I was testing it earlier, it was working. It does work for definite. And let's keep going with the memory channels. I've made quite a few videos on this device. See all the different kinds of bands. Broadcast, radio. Probably pick it up without an antenna. And you, yeah, you can change the colour. So I think that's enough. You get any idea of, you know, pound for pound, this, even though I've seen quite a few people saying bad things about this device, they say if you tap the screen, it affects it. You know, that you can't update the firmware, which I agree. You know, firmware mode on this, if you turn it off and turn it on with the power, I'm trying quite clearly doing it one-handed, but you, I'll just do it here. Um, hold it in, turn it on. Oh, it didn't work. Let's try again. Sorry about this, but it's fiddly with one hand. Hold it in, turn it on. There you are. You're in firmware mode, and it should detect it from the USB-C. The battery literally lasts forever. It's USB-C as well for charging. Nice speaker on it. I've, I've, I've messaged the, the sort of sellers, the clone. This is a clone, the clone sellers. 
is there a USB, you know, driver that we need so we can get this to show up as a disk image on so we can start playing with it? Um, so we'll see if we get a reply. So there's things you can pick faults for there. It, 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 you know, it, it probably does get birdies. It probably does get affected by things that are near it. You know, it's not perfect, but pound for pound, it's better value than the Malahit. Yeah, but the Malahit is definitely a superior device, just like if you bought yourself a Yesu FT5 or a Bofeng, you know, 5. There's a price difference, there's a quality difference. But I'm telling you now that this device, for what it costs, yeah, is excellent value. Is it an excellent device? Well, no, but that's why it's £75, not £275. Bye for now.